So this lecture is a screencast of a lecture that I have done did live in class through Mentimeter, which is a live interactive uh, platform. Throughout this presentation or this recording, if you see uh, a code to sign in or uh, you see a website, it's it's dead. So don't don't try to log in there. Um, I'm just screencasting the uh, the content because it's great content to help visual help us visualize levers and see a mechanical advantage. But I wanted you to have at least the class participants to kind of help uh, give us a backdrop for some information. So when we look here at the slide here, we're looking at levers and mechanical advantage. Um, that's our basic setup for a lever, right? And we have our uh, fulcrum in the middle, which also serves as the, in our, when we're looking at the human body, the joint. We have the lever arm itself, which is the bone. And then we have our load. And then we have our resistance. And this varies based on the different type of leverage setup. But in this particular aspect, this is a first class lever. This is a balance lever. You can see that the fulcrum is right in the middle and the 20 pound load and resistance, in this case, both load are three feet away from the axis of rotation. So if um, the game left, right, center, which way would this fall? Um, this would be fairly balanced. So if we show the image here, um, that was the uh, question there for, is this going to go left, right, center? And again, it is a play on the game left, right, center. And that should be balanced in that particular aspect. Now, if I double up the load on the right, um, which way is this going to go? And if you said to the right, you are correct. And you had some goofball said to the left. I don't know what that person was thinking. But when we see this image here, um, there's twice as much load on the right. Uh, the previous one was balanced. Even if I added one one hundredth of an ounce on that right side, it's going to offset the scales. What if I lighten the load on the left? Is this going to go left, right, or center? And it should go right. And so we, we got caught up now. So 10 pounds on the left versus 20 pounds on the right. And a balanced lever system. Just think of a teeter-totter. It's exactly where we're, we're at with that. What if I increase the weight on the right side? Of course, we're going to go to the right. So you guys are kind of getting it now, right? And now, what if I keep the weight the same, but I move it in a little closer, which way is this going to go? So in class, this confused some people. Um, and we look at the same load, 20 pounds, moving it closer. I don't know if the thought was is that it's going to be moving it more over to the right here. But when we're in this search situation and you have the axis, that's the pivot point there. Um, any change to load, the higher the load is going to it could affect one side or the other. If you keep the load the same, the shorter the distance is going to create a disadvantage or a greater distance is going to increase the advantage. So if I go back to this, 20 pounds equal distance uh, should be balanced. And if I increase the distance like I have done here on the right, this is giving this a mechanical advantage because I'm pushing that out to the right and that should um, so in this image here we have a setup and um, just quickly think um, which way is this going to go, left or right? And this should go to the right. If I have this image here, same distance, more load on the right, left or right, and it should go to the right. And if I have same distance and even more load on the right, to the right, right? So too easy, perfect, right? We're changing load, changing the distance. Um, we kind of kept one static and did the other. Now we get into this, these equations of what happens when I'm presented with both? How do you figure this out? And it was confusing for the class. Um, the answer, let me go back one slide here. The answer was it's going to go to the, to the right. And we'll work through that in a second here. But um, in physics, work is force times distance. 
And when we're dealing with rotation, um, we're dealing with torque, not forces. And so torque is force times distance. And in this case, we're looking at the weight times the distance. So what really determines whether the lever is going to tilt one way or the other is based on which, which system is doing more work. The one, the one that's doing more work is going to prevail. So in this case, the one that has the more distance and or the most weight or aka force is going to um, prevail and go to that direction. So in this case, we have 20 pounds on the left at three feet, 20 pounds on the right, uh, on, the, on the right three feet. We have 60 foot pounds or 60 units of work equally balanced. This is going to stay stable. So they're the same, 60 foot pounds. Now let's go back to that first one. How much work is being done or how much torque on the left? And that should be 30. And how much torque on the right? That should be 45. So based on the amount of work or torque that's being done, this should go to the right. So you can manipulate this any way that you like. You can go 10 and three or three and one, 30 and one. Um, you're going to have the same amount of work and it's going to stay right in the center. Again, left, right, center. You have 40 units of work on the left, 30 on the right. This is going to go to the left. The math doesn't have to be confusing. 4.5 feet by 10, that's 45 compared to 40. This is going to go to the left. Still too easy? Now let's start manipulating uh, more variables and have you solve for the equation. We look at the amount of work done on the right. You have 40 pounds, and that's at 3 feet, so that's 60 units of work. What distance does that need to be to, for this to be balanced? 6, right? Because 6 times 20 is 120. 3 times 40 is 120. They are balanced. So that's your definition of the first class lever. It's a, it's a balanced lever. You have load on either side. And uh, in this case, the loads are going down and you have the fulcrum in the middle. And again, this is a, this is a visual representation. It doesn't mean that the fulcrum is always equal in the middle. It just means that it splits the difference between the loads. Now, what if we move the fulcrum to the left and we put our loads on the right? This will always which go down which direction? It will always fall down. So if we have uh, if we take that same setup from the first class lever and put our load here, the mere fact of moving our fulcrum on the outside, we have either a second or third class lever. It's no longer a first class lever because all the loads and resistance, all the forces are on the same side. In this case, you have the arrows down, the load going down. This would not do anything for us. It'd basically be a ramp. But if we manipulate the direction of the force, remember a force is a push or a pull, and in this case, weight's always down, and tension is always a pull, we can start to um, use this machine to our advantage. In this case, weight in the middle, uh, tension pulling up, this, or we can flip it and have tension in the middle and weight down, that's what determines the second or third class member. Remember, it's what is in the middle that determines the class of the lever. In this case, I have a 10 pound load going down and I have 10 pounds of tension pulling up, which way will this go? And the class was totally wrong in this example. Remember, the, the loads are the same, the forces are the same, 10 pounds down, 10 pounds up, but which, who has distance on their side? And this one out here, this one has distance on his side. So that 10 pounds is going to actually be bigger torque. It doesn't matter if what the distance is, even if it's just one half of a millimeter, it's going to have a larger torque. If I switch these and I put the, uh, oops, I went too fast. Is this going to go up counterclockwise or down clockwise? And the answer now should be pretty clear down clockwise, right? It's rotating in that direction. So when the load is in the middle, so the force of gravity is in the middle, it's a force lever that's a second class lever. And in this case, two feet, five feet. If I now try to solve for this equation, if I have 500 pounds of total load coming down towards the earth, 
how much tension do I need to generate or how much force do I need to match it in order to keep it from falling? And we'll pretend this is a wheelbarrow situation. So two times 250 is 500. Uh, five into that should be 100. And that is the correct answer. So hopefully that makes sense, right? You're just trying to match the work output between the two. So two times 250 is 500. Five times 100 is 500. Now, if I switch the positions of the load and the tension, I get a third class lever, I get a speed lever. So in this case, I have 10 pounds in the middle, 10, and 10 pounds out. If I have that same setup where I have, a, let's say, a 10-pound load way out, five feet out, and I'm pulling up with a rope or a chain at two feet, how much tension do I need to generate? How much force do I need to apply in order to keep that 10-pound load from dropping down? So if I have 50 units of work, five times 10 is 50, I'm at a distance of two, I should need 25 uh, units of, of work or force. What if I'm at half a foot, so six inches or half a foot, I'm at 40 units of force for 10 pound load, I'm gonna need to generate 80 pounds of force to be able to match that 10 pound load. That's a 10 pound load Think about it if it was a 50 pound dumbbell and not at half a foot or six inches, but seven to 15 millimeters away. So a few eighths of an inch. Although there are first class and second class levers throughout the body, the third class lever is the majority of that. And we would think that that would be a, a disadvantage. But that's if you're looking at speed, uh, at force and force alone. Remember from the biomechanics aspect that machines do multiple things. They balance, they change direction, and levers create mechanical advantage. And we have output not just for force, but for also speed. So for 100 pounds of, of force, in order to match that one pound, you would think that's, that's such an unfair trade-off. But let's look at the, what's happening during this situation. When I look at the, da the dash line there, that's my starting position, and that segment is rotating up. That bone is rotating up, and let's say it takes two seconds to do that. It rotates, and this point here is rotating the exact same speed that's rotating there. It's not rotating anything differently, right? So if it makes a full revolution, the whole thing made a full revolution. But if I look at the linear change here, if I look at the distance that went from the dash line straight up to the, the solid line, or the dash line to the solid line, you can see now that the arrows are different, that the arrow here is much bigger than the arrow there. The linear distance traveled there in the same time. It took two seconds for that to change. Remember, same two seconds, and you can see the comparison side by side by those arrows. For the same two seconds, I covered four times more distance. So yes, I'm at a load disadvantage, a force disadvantage, but significantly increased the speed. And remember, speed doesn't always mean I'm going faster. It is going faster, but it's not because the sake of moving faster. It means that I'm controlling more distance in a shorter period of time. So for three centimeters of movement in this example, I'm getting 12 centimeters at the distal end at the output. So I only need to, I only need to steer or control or shorten just a few units to get significantly more output at the distal end. And so the body looks at that as a advantage. And you look at here, how much, when I shorten here a little bit or change the distance, I only have to lift this up a little bit, but look how much control or how much uh, output I get from that. And so when we look at the third class lever, which is the most popular in the body, yes, there's some examples of first and second class, but the muscle only has to shorten just a few centimeters, if that, millimeters, for it to change quite a bit at the distal end, right? And it's easier for the muscle to generate tension than it is to shorten its whole mechanical aspect. There's only so much space there. So that is um, looking at the levers from that. This is the mechanical form. And uh, hopefully that was, um, that was helpful.